Welcome to Acton Methodist Church. He is risen. Happy Easter. We're so glad that you are here with us this morning. My name is Wade, and I'm the lead pastor of this church, and it's my honor to welcome all of you here this morning. Jesus is risen, and we have someone to celebrate, and so we're so glad that you are here. We want to let each and every one of you know whether you are a regular attendee of this church or you happen to be a family member who's been invited to attend this morning, or you just happen to be driving by and you found us, we want to let you know that you've been prayed over this morning. That we expect God, the resurrection power through God in Jesus Christ, be made, to be made known wherever you are worshiping with us today. We know that behind every screen is a person who matters to Jesus, and we hope that you experience his love for you this morning. We want to let you know that as we uh, continue in this social isolation with the church, the, the work of the church continues. I want to share with you three ways real quick during these announcements. One is that we are planning on a trip uh, to Israel in November, and my wife and I are leading it, and there's a Zoom information meeting this coming Tuesday. You'll see information on the screen. We would love for you to participate. You don't even have to be a member of this church. If you just want to go to Israel and you want to hang out with us for a little bit, we'd love for you to be a part of that meeting. The second thing is that we have people who still want to join the church, even though we are in social isolation. Next Sunday, we're going to have a new partner meeting, and we would love for you to join with us via Zoom. We can all have a great time participating, learning about the church, and you understanding your part in what God's doing in the church. And the third thing we have going on in the life of the church that continues is the work of Rancho Brazos. So I'm going to invite Pastor Ben to come forward, and he's going to share a little bit about Rancho Brazos and what a difference your giving makes. Good morning, church. It's good to see you today. As you uh, are listening to me, you're going to see a couple of pictures come up onto the screen. These are some images of what's going on at the Rancho Brazos Community Center and the Sandy Beach Community Center. As you may know, for the past several weeks, as schools have been out, we have continued to serve our community. Uh, every day we're serving about 125 kids breakfasts and lunches, as, long, as well as helping their families out. And it's only by your generosity that these things can continue to happen. So this morning we'll invite you to go to actedmethodist.com slash giving. If you want to give directly to the Rancho Brazos or Sandy Beach Ministries to continue that food ministry, we'd love for you to do that. Or if if you want to support the church just through general giving, we'd also love that as well. Because in addition to Rancho and Sandy Beach, we have many other ministries that are going on right now that are reaching out to our community, reaching out all over the world to let people know that they are loved by Jesus and by us. Thank you, Pastor Ben. We celebrate the resurrected Savior, and we're so glad that you are here this morning. In just a few moments, the, the O'Carroll family is going to share the opening scripture with us. They're worshiping with us from home this morning. But before we do so, let me pray for you as we go into this time of worship. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the power of your resurrection, and we thank you for the love of each person behind each screen that's logged in with us right now. Now, Lord, we pray that the same power that rolled that stone away on that Easter morning will be the same power that works through this service to enliven the, the hearts and the minds and the hands and the feet of your people. God, you are calling them by name, and Lord, we give you thanks through the power of your resurrection. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Good morning and happy Easter, everyone. We're the O'Carroll family, and we're worshiping online with you today. Today's scripture is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. 
The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I want to invite you to continue singing with us this morning. We have a reason to sing today on this Resurrection Sunday. We have a reason to raise a hallelujah to the heavens. And that reason is Jesus, the one who came for us, the one who defeated death in the grave for us so that we might have eternal hope. Let's sing to him. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Yes. 
we celebrate you, Jesus. You are worthy. Rumors of the Son of Man, stories of the Savior, holiness with human hands, treasure for the trade. Easter Church family. 
He is worthy. He is worthy of his name. And we get to gather wherever you find yourself. You get to gather this morning, raising your hands in praise of the one who gives you life. Not the one who gave life all of those years ago, but the one who give li gives life right now and who is going to continue to give you life tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. It is good to be with you this morning on this Resurrection Sunday. As a family of faith, we celebrate together, and we also mourn together, and we have both of those things, and so I would like for you to celebrate with the O'Carrolls this morning. You just saw them a moment ago reading scripture with their beautiful family, 16 years they've been married. Congratulations. You guys are an inspiration to us all. We also have a new baby in our midst. His name is Edward Joe Ward, we're going to call him, Avery. He was born to Jennifer Avery, and so if you see Lisa or Larry or Caroline or, or any of that family, just let them know. If you see him on Facebook or if you want to give him a call, just let them know that you're praying over their entire family, that you're praying Christ's blessings on their beautiful addition. We also have those in our midst who are mourning this day, mourning the loss of loved ones. And so we pray with Bretta Conway and her family and the death of her mother. We pray with the family and friends of Craig Gossard. We pray with Doug Kay and his family and the loss of his mother. And just this morning, just this morning, Brian wife, his mother was raised into resurrection glory. If you want to give some of these brothers and sisters of yours a call, if you want to shoot them an email or maybe holler at them over Facebook or however you're reaching out now, they would appreciate it. We are one in the spirit. We are one as the body of Christ, and we pray as a body now. Awesome, awesome God. Powerful, mighty, giver of life, giver of the way and the truth. God, you are here in this place. You are here with every single one of us, no matter where we find ourselves. And today, in your presence, we celebrate your risen son. We celebrate that sin is, uh, well, it has no hold over us anymore. We celebrate that Jesus came out of that tomb and that we live in resurrection glory. We celebrate God today that no matter where we found ourselves a few weeks ago or a few days ago or a few moments ago even, if it was dark, if we were scared, if we had a door shut between us and the rest of the world, if there was, if there was a tomb that we found ourselves in, God, we celebrate right now that Jesus, Jesus has redeemed us, that Jesus has stepped into our situation as only Jesus can and has resurrected us out of that darkness, out of that death, out of that dry bone state that we are in and that we get to walk in the light of life. Thank you, God. We are Easter people. We are people who get to go out of this place, who got to go out of our homes eventually, <laughs> who get to look out at those whom we love, however we're able to look out at them as people who know that the victory has already been won, as people who know that Jesus is present, that the power of the Holy Spirit walks with us, guides us, sustains us, gives us strength every single moment of every single day. God, that is what we are celebrating today. That is what we are remembering today. And we offer you thanks and praise. God, that you meet us in our faults. You meet us in our failures. You meet us in our human frailty. And you say, I love you so much that I love you right where you are and enough not to leave you there. 
that you say step into my resurrection glory with me. Turn to me, repent of your sin. Let us walk in renewed life together, God. That is who you are. Thank you. Thank you, God, so much. This day, this day we begin anew. We don't want to go back to the people that we were before. We don't want to stay the people that we are now. We want to move forward in the light of your love. And we want to send that out into a world who desperately needs you. Desperately, God. Give us that boldness, that holy courage to speak your gospel into the world around us, to be your mouthpiece, to be your hands, to be your feet. And so, God, it is a people who understand right here and right now that joy absolutely came in the morning, that we lift up our voices together and we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Christy, and thank you all once again for being here with us this morning. We are Easter people, and if you have been a part of, the, of Christian faith for a while, you know that, that Easter is, is huge. Everything hinges on Easter. Uh, Easter is celebrated because uh, God is the one who raised Jesus from the dead. It's through the, the resurrection of Jesus that we have the forgiveness of our sins. We have the hope of the future. Like some of you, uh, maybe... You know, you grew up in the church, I grew up in the church, and I celebrated every Easter. It wasn't an option for me. It may not be an option for y'all either. But I remember celebrating Easter after Easter after Easter, and uh, I'm so thankful for my parents who, who planted seeds of faith in me. And I'm thankful for the church family that surrounded me. But it, but it wasn't until I started taking ownership of the faith for myself that, that Easter really began to mean something. And so today for this Easter message, I want to share with you why Easter is important to me. And so maybe as you hear why it's important to me, you might resonate, it might resonate with you and you might come to determine for the first time or for the first time in a long time why this is such a big deal for you, not just in general, but for you. So I want to pray for you. And as I pray for you, I'd love for you to pray for me. It's a, it's a big deal to, to be able to preach to you and to come into your home. And that's a sacred trust. And so I'd appreciate any prayers that you could throw my way as well. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the power of your resurrection. Thank you that, that you make all things new. And so God, for those who are gathered behind every screen, Lord, have your way. Make your presence known, Lord. Uh, not just the idea of you, but the real you, every single bit of you. Make yourself real and known for every person behind every screen. Lord, we trust you, and we love you, and we want to love you more. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So, to, to understand what it is I believe about Easter and about the resurrection, I've, I've got to go back to the Scripture story, because if it was just left up to me, I'd come up with any number of weird things to believe. But Scripture gives me a basis for how to understand what's going on, and it helps give me some, some terms and some ideas and some, some understanding of who this resurrected Jesus is. And so the first thing I want to share with you that's meaningful to me that hopefully will be meaningful to you about this Easter is that the, the resurrected Christ is personable. The resurrected Christ is personable. I, I for one, don't want to follow someone who I, I can't resonate with. I don't want to follow someone if I feel like I'm forced to follow them. Uh, for some of you, as you're, as you're walking along in the faith, it, it feels kind of like forced upon you. You know God is good, Jesus is gracious, and the Holy Spirit's up to something maybe. But, but you really haven't had that personal connection with. I can tell you 
that my faith began to be my own faith and not just the faith of my parents when I began to understand for the first time and over time that the resurrected Christ is personable, that, that Christ knows me and I know him. And it's not just I'm, I'm relying on the coattails of my family, but he came for me and he was resurrected for me. In fact, let's look at this passage of scripture from the Gospel of John chapter 20, and we'll see how personable the resurrected Christ has been from the very beginning, not just for today. So now Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels seated in white, seated where Christ's body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot, and they asked her, woman, why are you crying? And she answered, they have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. And he asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? To me, that's a very, very personable experience of the resurrected Christ with Mary. And it's that same personal interaction of the resurrected Christ that not only that he had for Mary, but he has for you and me that makes all the difference in the world. In in that tune, and and I'm imagining this, uh, we all kind of read things in a little different way, but when Mary saw the angels, that was terrifying. So when they said, woman, what are you crying for? I'm sure she was like, whoa, um, this this is really weird. But then when she turned around and she saw Jesus, and Jesus called her woman, why are you crying? What are you looking for? In, in, my, in my mind, in my imagination, he's calling her by name. Not like the angels. The angels were proclaiming truth also. But Jesus was making it personable. And as I've come to understand Easter more and more profoundly for myself, understand that in many ways the resurrected Christ calls me by name. He calls me by name and says, Wade, what are you looking for? Wade, why are you weeping sometimes? And to me, that helps prove that the resurrection is real. Uh, People who are dead cannot call you by name. But God raised Jesus from the dead and didn't just raise Jesus from the dead in a a standoffish point, point of view, but in a very personable way of doing things. He calls me by name. And that helped transfer me from the faith of my parents, which I'm so thankful for. To where I understood that in all the expanse of time, as he put each star up in the sky and he set the moon in place and he breathed life into the first humans and he created the animals and all the plant life of this earth, he still knows me by name. That's the joy of knowing the resurrected Savior. You can't say that about any other religion, but you can say that about Christianity. The resurrected Christ proves that he knows you by name, just like he knew Mary's name back in the day. So I want you to think about it for your own self, that he's calling you by name right now, and he's calling you by name, and he's saying, what are you worried about? Why are you weeping? What is it that you're looking for? He continues to call you by name. And the joy that we have on this Easter morning is not that Jesus rose from the dead in some abstract manner, but that the resurrected Christ is personable for you. He calls you by name for you. And so let me, let me dig down, down to this in just a little bit deeper way. These are such weird times, right? And, and for those of you who, who are physically distanced from your family this morning, this is a different Easter. And, and some of you feel alone. Even though you've got technology, you've FaceTimed them, or you've done video conferencing with them through Zoom, or you've talked with them on the phone, there, there's still a little bit of loneliness and there's still a little bit of distance and still God calls you through the power of the resurrected Christ, calls you by name and says, what are you fearful of? What are you longing for? Who is it that you're looking for? He calls you in the midst of your loneliness, even if you've got people around you and you still feel like you've got people around you, but you still have no one on this planet who understands you. The resurrected Christ is making it personable and he's calling you by name. For those of you who are upended because of the economy and jobs and and you're not sure really what's going on, in the midst of all that chaos, Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, still calls you by name. So I want you to think about where you are right now and, and maybe out loud or at least quietly, imagine Jesus right there with you right now in the midst of whatever it is that you're going through and he's calling you by name.
He has done that for me. He has called me by name, and I don't know of a sweeter sound than to, to sense that the resurrected Christ is calling me by my name. And he hasn't just done it once. He continues to do it, and I'm, more and more I get tuned to the sound of his voice, and that same promise is for you because the resurrected Christ is personal, and I hope you know that for yourself today. I also love the, the Easter story now for myself, not just because of my parents, took me to church, but I also love that the resurrected Christ is purposeful, that he didn't just show up to whisper my name, and I'm so thankful for that, but he also gave me a purpose. I love knowing what my purpose is. I'm, I'm, I'm very purpose-driven. I like making a list of things. I like setting goals. I love doing that. So to know that the resurrected Christ has a history of being very purposeful with the people that he loves, and for all of creation, I want more of that. If we continue the resurrection story, we find out that later that day, after he had visited with Mary in the beginning, at the end of the day, of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked out of fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Let me pause here for just a moment. You need to know that peace is the absence of chaos. I was visiting with Haliani, our, our traditional worship leader, a couple weeks ago, and she shared that understanding of, of the original word peace means the absence or the eradication of chaos. So when Jesus breaks into the room where they were living in fear, when he says peace, it's not just some teddy bear, cuddly way of understanding peace, but his peace, his presence obliterates all chaos. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, peace be with you. I'm obliterating the chaos here. And as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, I love that. I love that because Jesus was resurrected in a very personable way, but also a very purposeful way. So when I, when I hear that Jesus is whispering my name, and sometimes he's shouting my name to get my attention because I, I don't always pay attention. But when he's calling my name, he's calling my name for a reason. One, to know that I am his and he is mine. That, that his resurrection has enabled me to have a relationship with the living God. But also, that he has put me on purpose. As God sent him, now Jesus is sending me the, the power of the resurrection. He, and he's sending me to do this. Not to do magnificent things on my own. Not to be the master of my own domain. Not to make a name for myself. He's not doing that for you either. The resurrected Christ came to the disciples and said, God has sent me, now I am sending you. He said that to each of the disciples back then. And the purpose for that was to go into the world to, to, to usher in the new kingdom that was showing up. You know, in the Lord's Prayer, we say, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's very purposeful. So one of the things I love about the resurrection, and I'm loving more and more, is that Christ was resurrected on purpose to give us a purpose, and it all came from the purpose maker. I love that. And what that means is that wherever we go and whatever we do, we've been sent on a mission. We're to partner up with what God is doing. So, so let me be sure you're, here, you're clear on this. Even those who've attended several Easter services, and you kind of know how this whole thing goes, He's still calling you, and he still wants to be in your life in a very personal way, but for you to have purpose. For family members who've joined in with their family today because you've been asked to do so, that you too, Jesus is calling you by name in a very personable way to set you apart on purpose. And for even those who've been driving by and you're kind of like, what's going on here? I've never been to an Easter service before, but now you have the safety of being behind a screen to check it out. This resurrected Jesus that we're talking about very personally is calling you by name, but also very purposely setting you apart for a reason. That means that in our families, we, we try to pour into our families, even when we're getting frustrated with one another, even when we're living in close quarters with one another, and we may not have as much social distancing as we sometimes would like. Jesus is still calling us to admit when we make mistakes, live with one another in love, and proceed in grace. It also means that whoever we interact with or whoever we call, we do it on purpose. 
that we might add a little God seasoning to the dull flavors of this world and be a light that shines in the darkness. Friends, whoever you are, as you've gathered here today, maybe one of the things that you need to hear is that Jesus doesn't just love you and doesn't just save you. He does do those things, but he does that for a purpose. And he's given you a purpose. And thankfully, we believe in a resurrected Savior who leads us actively now. I love that for myself in understanding about Easter, and I hope you do as well. And another thing I love about Easter is that the resurrected Christ is powerful. Man, I love not just the peace of Christ, but I love the power of Christ. I love, I love that Christ is, the resurrected Christ is persistent. And he, and he doesn't get scared when we have questions or concerns or when we're going through a rough time. That his power is made known through the resurrected Christ. As we go on with the story of the resurrection, a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. And though the doors were locked, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Once again, Jesus shows up and obliterates the chaos. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here in my hands and put your hands in my side. Stop doubting and believe. I love that about the resurrected Jesus, that he doesn't get shy about meeting us exactly where we are. And Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God, and then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I love, love, love the power of the resurrected Christ, that even today he meets us exactly where our, where our struggles are. But for some of you who are watching today, you, you have real struggles and real doubts. You, you have struggles with how science and faith fit together. And because it doesn't make sense on one side, you kind of jettison the other side. And, and I want to tell you that as Christians, we believe God put all those natural laws in place. And science and faith are not in opposition to one another, but they complement one another because all laws come from the one who spun the earth in place in the begin with. We have nothing to fear about that. And whatever questions you have, we believe in a resurrected Christ who is powerful enough to lead you in understanding him more clearly. For, uh, for others of you, you know, God's power is what you need right now through the resurrection. You've been doing enough things on your own for right now, and you've reached about the end of your limit. Your gas tank is running on empty. You've been running on fumes for a while anyway, but now the tank is empty in your relationships, in your own personal self-worth, and how you see the world, your tank is empty. And you don't need a, a pick-me-up. You need the personable, resurrected Savior who came to give you a, a purpose to fill you with his power. And that's my prayer for you today. That no matter what your struggle is, as you walk through the valley, God's power is that, that which will go with you through that valley. Those are the reasons that I love the resurrection because in my weakness, God's strength is made known through the power of the resurrection. If he was rotting in a grave, there would be no hope. We would all be pitied. But he's not in a grave somewhere. He is risen, and he is risen indeed. So what I want to share with you in closing is this, is that for those of you who are, who are struggling under the weight of sin this morning, I, I want to share with you as someone who continues to be redeemed and saved. God's not done with me yet. I keep on messing up, and I still need his resurrection, uh, uh, personalizing his love for me. His, his purpose and his power, I need that all the time, and I know you do as well. For those of you who are weighted down under the shackles of sin, know that it is Christ who bore our sin so that we didn't have to. That's the power of the resurrection. On his death and in his resurrection, he conquered the power of sin. You may still struggle with it, but Christ will have the last, last word. For those of you who have a fear of death, and everyone during this season has probably contemplated their own mortality with the COVID-19 going on and other things going on, can I tell you that in his resurrection, Christ has conquered the power of death? In fact, the early Christian church understood this as well. They asked the question, where of death is your sting? Where is your power? And the early church responded because they believed in the resurrected Christ that death has lost its sting because the power of the resurrection is enough. For those of you who are here and, and you're with us today, and there's a lot of things that you're fearing. You're fearing what the future holds. You can't even see the future now. And so because you can't see the future, it's impacting your present. Can I tell you that perfect love casts out all fear? 
we're, we're, we're called to live daily anyway, not planning two and four and, and six weeks or months or years ahead. And I'm a planner. You know how difficult that is for me to say that? But we're not called to necessarily live in the future. We're to live in the present, trusting God with the future. So for those of you who are fearing because you can't see what's going to happen tomorrow, that's okay. The resurrected Christ can, and he's there with you right now in a very personable way, on purpose, and with his power. And for those of you who are feeling alone right now, wherever you are, I want to give you hope today that through the power of the resurrected Christ, that you are not alone. Your family may be here, there, and everywhere. Your family may have gone on to glory. You, you may have people around you, but yet you still feel alone. Uh, mental illness is a really big deal for a lot of people these days, apart from loneliness. And wherever you are today, I pray that the resurrected Christ will speak to you in the midst of your loneliness, in the midst of your struggle, and that you will know that it's through the power of the resurrected Christ that he sends his Holy Spirit so that you would never be alone. In fact, the resurrected Christ told his disciples that he would be with them always to the end of the age. And I pray that you will know that in a very personable way this morning as the resurrected Christ gives you purpose and fills you with his power. So my hope for you today on this resurrected Sunday, because I have experienced and I continue to want to experience it more, is that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We don't worship a dead man. We worship the Lord who is still alive and who reigns forever and ever. He is not only our Lord, but our Savior. And so my hope and trust is that your knee will bow and your tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. For he is worth it, he is worthy, and he is, he is enough to be glorified and enough to be honored. And I hope that you experience him in a personal purposeful and powerful way today. I want to pray for you. And, I, and as I pray for you, uh, maybe you want to pray for those family members or friends that you know need to hear this message today. Uh, it, it's just the resurrection message. I didn't come up with anything new. Uh, Christ came up with it. But you know those people who need to hear this. And maybe you want to share this with them. I'd hope that you will and that God would get all the honor and glory and they would get the benefit. But I want to pray for you and I want to pray for them. And then we're going to close with a communion, and we're also going to sing our closing song of praise. And so we're so thankful that you're here today. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we pray that the power of your resurrection, through the witness of your Holy Spirit, Lord, will testify to each and every person behind each and every screen today, that you will lift the weight of sin from their shoulders, that you will rescue them from the depths of of fear of death, that those who are lonely, Lord, that they would feel your presence right now and that your presence with them would bring them peace. Lord, we pray that they will have eyes to see and hearts to, to experience the warmth of your embrace, Lord. Lord, and we pray for those family members who are wandering, for those loved ones who are the prodigals who have gone off and they're living their own life. Lord, I pray as a good father, you will continue to look out for them and you will welcome them home, maybe today, but maybe tomorrow. But Lord, I thank you for the faithful remnant who are praying for loved ones today, who are standing in the gap for those who may not even realize that there are people standing in the gap for them. Through the power of your resurrection, Lord, would you complete what it is that you have already started in that process? We know that you desire that none would perish, but they would have everlasting life, not only in eternity, but right now, Lord. Lord, we pray that hearts are strangely warmed, that minds are transformed, and that hands and feet are loosened to do your will with a purpose. God, we seek your power. May it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. As you get ready to, to continue living this week, we want to offer you an opportunity to celebrate the, the tangible means of grace, either right now or maybe later in the service, if you do, or later today, if you do have family and friends that are around, or maybe you can do it over Zoom or FaceTime. I think that's pretty awesome, the technology that we have available. But remember on this Easter Sunday that we serve a Savior who came and died for us. Never forget that. That with whatever bread you have in your house, even if it's a cracker or just a slice of bread, that will do. God can redeem it. That on the night in which Christ gave himself up for us, he had dinner with his disciples, 
and he took a loaf of bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, and passed it amongst his disciples and said, take and eat each of you. This is my body, which is broken for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you take it, do it in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, and he gave thanks to God. And once again, if you have grape juice or anything else, it's okay. God can redeem it and transform it. On that same dinner, he took the cup, and he gave thanks to God, passed it amongst his disciples, and said, take and drink, each of you. This is my blood, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you take it, do it in remembrance of me. So maybe you want to do this later today to have a real tangible experience of the resurrected Christ who is very personable, very purposeful, and very powerful for you. I know we prayed the Lord's Prayer earlier in the service, but it's worth praying a second time. So wherever you are, would you bow your heads and let's all join together in the Lord's Prayer. If you're not familiar with it, we're going to have it on the screen as well. And then after that, we're going to close in praise. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this bread and cup and whoever will abide by it this, this day. Lord, we pray that your presence will be felt. And so, Lord, as we pray, we use the words of your Son, our Savior, the resurrected Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you are able, wherever you are, let's stand up and sing our final song of praise.
and I will rise among the saints. My gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. sing endless praises to God. Happy Easter to you today on this day that Christ is indeed risen. As we leave this place today, we leave with our hands, and we leave with our feet, and we leave with our voice, and take this celebration out to wherever we are. May we as a risen church go out with such energy and such enthusiasm, and such praise that the very earth would shake and lightning might flash as people see the love of Christ in us as we further his kingdom purposes here on earth. So leave this day, church. Be the church risen. Rock on in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.